You are currently the only person in this conference.
Hello everyone, how are you all doing? We'll be starting very shortly. Uh, just a few minutes and we'll be good to go. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to this course on molecular docking. Yeah, just few more people are joining in, and we'll be starting shortly. Meanwhile, uh, let's just get quickly introduced and start towards our uh, coursework. So, first of all, welcome again, everyone, those who are present, and some of the, uh, you are still joining in. My name is Jitesh Doshi, and I will be your instructor for this particular course on molecular docking. Uh, I'm a bioinformatician by background and currently running a small startup called Inside Biotech Solutions in Navi, Mumbai, India. And we work basically in this structural bioinformatics domain, providing services, analytics, as well as uh, the training. So uh, before we go ahead and 
few people are still joining in why don't you guys just quickly introduce yourself just tell me uh, i can already see your names just tell me uh, what are you doing currently studying then what course which year and where are you from so i just get an idea about what kind of audience we have today and we can articulate the course accordingly hello bhimanyu hi b farm fifth semester great adiya phd biotechnology very well nuran msc organic chemistry okay very good uh, you are already working with the drug discovery cro all right okay okay PhD, IIT Guwahati. Uh, Nirmalya, uh, PhD in which field you are doing? Uh, Gururaj, assistant professor on computational electrochemistry. Very well. Uh, cancer immunotherapy. All right. Okay. Okay. MSc Human Genetics, uh, Bioinformatics, assistant professor. All right. okay okay that's really good so we have a really good very diverse kind of audience we have people from biotech uh, from chemistry from genetics many different parts of uh, fields of the life sciences we are from okay so let's start uh, getting into the course and slowly get introduced to the course first and then we'll move ahead and learn more about the docking so first of all i again formally welcome all of you to this course in this course on molecular docking we will be essentially of course as the name suggests we'll be talking about the technique called molecular docking which is present and has applications in many different areas so before we get into the technical part let me just clear out some of the logistics about the course how we're going to go about it what all the things included everything so we will be starting with the very basics though i can see that some of you have some background regarding this kind of studies but we will be starting with the very basics and we'll be moving forward towards some advanced studies with the help of docking uh the course is divided into uh, like basically six different sessions of uh, 3 hours uh, each and every day we'll be discussing about the several aspects of molecular docking a specific type and the analysis of those things uh this course will be of course held with many different freely available resources there are many tools available and we'll be discussing the importance of all of these things in the different types of molecular docking studies uh molecular docking requires some kind of a base to be already made with respect to the molecular structures the molecular data file formats all those stuff so we'll be starting right there and we'll be slowly moving towards the uh, actually performing the docking with various tools and analyzing the results during this course uh basically uh okay let me just share the screen first and then we can talk about it okay. 
so during this particular course the aim is going to understand the basic concepts behind docking the theory behind docking first making ourselves comfortable with the different environments of molecular modeling tools and etc and then actually performing various dockings on some real data sets going forward and some practice data sets as well in this course we are going to talk about lot of different things and as we have a, a people from many different backgrounds some part may not be directly relevant to someone for example when we'll be talking about the chemical substances their structures their fall formats their organization the people from chemistry will be of course very comfortable with those terminologies but those from other fields like biology if you have any doubts regarding them or if you feel that something needs to be explained even the simplest thing that needs to be uh, told to me so that i can discuss that right away elaborate on it and only then we will move forward similar goes to the people from chemistry like for example there is a part of this going to be uh, the biological side or biological aspect of it uh, and that uh, may not be relevant to people from chemistry or may not have been uh, taught to them so if you have any questions regarding those aspects feel free to discuss those so that we all will be on the same page going forward so uh, let's start very slowly going into this field of uh, molecular docking first today session we will mostly be dealing with some basic stuff like what does what these molecules are how do we represent them uh, what are the structural details of those what molecular modeling is slowly slowly then we will be today discussing about databases like pdb from where we get the data about our new uh, biomolecular structures etc so today's uh, session the first session is going to be quite introductory it's just kind of setting the base right base for all of the things that we'll be doing uh, going forward from here so that's what we'll aim for today today there is not going to be any uh, like heavy like software usage or anything we'll mostly discuss about some important things about uh, basic base setup and then we will move towards the final docking protocols at any moment again uh, asking questions is the most important part of these kind of sessions that will keep it more interactive and i would know that where exactly uh, there is a gap that needs to be filled for different people around here so let's first get a very quick overview of what molecular docking is and then uh, we will briefly deviate from the docking and start to prepare ourselves for the background of docking that how to get the molecules how do we represent the structures where do they come from so those setup we will do and then we will jump into the docking slowly so basically just to start up with the docking why so uh, where does this docking come into picture and why do we do it so we'll understand the applications so just imagine any general biological biochemical or other kinds of test or reactions you do in the uh, laboratory uh, whether you are working in a biological laboratory or uh, the chemical laboratory you will always be involved with some kind of reactions so for example here as you can see uh, the first image over here shows you that it is a result of a catalyst test catalase is an enzyme which is present in certain types of bacteria and detection of those bacteria the catalase test is done so the thing is catalase is basically an enzyme which converts hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen giving those effervescences or bubbles in the solution so if these are seen uh, basically that means the catalase enzyme is present or if they are not seen that means it is not present similarly look at the second image over here which shows a uh, certain changes into the cell morphology after a certain inhibitor is added to the cell uh, the, basically the cells or cell culture uh, third image here shows the ligand binding assays so whenever you are studying the ligand binding with any protein or any uh, enzyme you do some kind of binding assays or biological assays uh, where you will be able to see the change in various properties change in color change in odor change in uh the radioactivity there could be any different indicators that you could use for a certain activity now when you look at all these tests they tell us about that there is something happening some change is happening in the system so this change why does it happen what it is grounded in so the years of research in the physics and chemistry tells us that all these changes that we see in various forms they are grounded in the molecular level interactions that means 
when certain molecules interact with each other that's how they will uh, do some kind of interactions and that's how they will show these kind of results so those multiple molecules acting against different other molecules that combined effect will be seen as the morphological change or the change in color of the reaction or these effervescences or any other indication that you have so the root cause of all these things that we see is the molecular interaction so investigating that molecular interaction is basically of utmost importance because if we can understand this molecular interactions we will basically understand how that particular reaction is going to happen and what will what is going to happen over there that's where bio uh, this particular uh, molecular docking of bio molecules with other molecules comes into picture essentially molecular docking tells us whether the given two molecules are able to interact with each other or not that's what the molecular docking essentially does so for molecular docking uh, to be understood properly we have to understand the principle of molecular recognition now every cellular process that we have oh slides are not visible oh i already have shared it why it should be visible let me just reshare the screen just one second i'll uh, share, share the entire screen actually not just the specific one so it should be available okay it's loading now okay i'll uh, go back to that slide of course yeah so uh, is it visible now i have reshared the screen entire screen earlier i had just shared only the one slide so probably it was not visible okay 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 fine all right so let's go yeah so this basically i was what i was talking about was these things and these are the things that we see on the outer or exterior or as a physiological change or some kind of uh, other physical change so all of these are grounded into the molecular interactions and that's where the concept of docking actually begins so the principle of every process natural process that we see happening is the molecular interaction when various molecules interact with each other they do some kind of interactions if those are favorable they will bring about certain changes into the system and that's how a certain process will basically be continued so the goal of the molecular docking studies is basically twofold one to understand whether the given two molecules do they interact favorably with each other or not so that is the one thing and the second aspect of docking is that if they do interact favorably then what is the orientation what is basically a conformation of that particular molecules which maximizes the interactions between those and minimizes the energy so that's basically what docking tries to do it will try to find out the comfortable conformation of two molecules with each other wherein it will maximize the positive interactions and minimize the energy of the system so ultimately we are looking for the complex of structure at minimum energy state and as we know from our basic thermodynamic studies and other energetic studies minimum energy conformation means the maximum stable conformation in most common cases so that's why we try to reach or kind of explore this minimum energy conformation of the molecules which will help us identify whether they have the favorable interaction or not and if they have then we can use this information in many different ways grounded in many different applications for various reasons we'll see the application slides in some time so for these uh, molecular recognition to happen uh, the most important parts are this interatomic interaction so when two molecules come close to each other there are going to be certain types of interactions happening and based on the nature of those interactions those molecules either will undergo certain chemical transformation uh, or they will repel each other and go on their own way as we know molecules are always in a constant state of motion we know it as an brownian motion so they will be constantly moving bombarding with different molecules and when they make positive or favorable interactions they will basically interact with each other and some kind of chemical reaction would happen there are many types of uh, interatomic interactions so for example uh, enzyme substrate complex so when the substrate is reaching to an enzyme only when they have certain kind of complementarity the substrate will be able to bind to the enzyme after it binds some of the active set residues will provide the necessary chemical potential to bring about the changes it can be the breakage of the bonds it can be cleavage it can be transfer of certain moieties to some other moieties so all those things would happen when they do the favorable interactions 
There are many types of interactions which contribute toward all overall molecular recognition. We will be discussing this topic, of course, further the molecular recognition going forward. Uh, so some of these important ones are van der Waals forces, which are the basically non-bonded interactions that happen between the atoms, hydrophobic interactions, which are entropic in nature, dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bond interactions are often very important in the uh, drug discovery application. If you are looking for that, then ion dipole, ion ion covalent interactions, which are of course the strongest and have the highest uh, like energy. So there are a lot of these different types of interactions which are uh, which are happening between the two molecules when they come close to each other. So the goal of the docking process is to identify such interactions, uh, change the orientations or maximize these interactions, thus minimizing the energy of the entire complex of two molecules, any two molecules they could be. Especially if you look at the drug discovery studies. So whenever you're doing the ligand and target docking, that is going to be our major discussion, how to do the protein and ligand docking. And apart from that, we also will be studying some other kinds of docking one by one. So in this, the contribution of hydrogen bond is uh, supposedly very important. They stabilize the complex very well, and they basically uh, can help uh, the drug or a ligand molecule do its function against the protein. So uh, that is there. So these are basically just different representations, how different types of bonds can come. What are the different types that we can see in the ligand protein interactions? So uh, these are very important part of the docking process. And that's why we need to understand some basic things about the molecular structures, their formations. Only then we will understand the molecular modeling and further interaction modeling of those. So let, I'll come to these uh, things again for more explanation. So as I mentioned, one of the statement was the hydrogen bonds are especially very important in stabilizing the drug target interactions. And they uh, like, of course, they alone are not responsible. Many other types of interactions are happening, but you will see a very good correlation between the number of hydrogen bonds which are made. Of course, for certain group of drugs, I'm not saying this is for every type of drug. You will see a strong correlation between the number of hydrogen bonds and the activity of that particular molecule that we see. So, for example, here you can see uh, the ligand interaction diagram that we call it leak plot between two drugs. One is rafecoxib or Vioxx is a brand name and mefenamic acid, which is a part of many uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. So both of these molecules currently are bound to the same target. That is the cyclooxygenase 2 or COX-2. That is the enzyme in our body, which produces certain prostaglandins. So if you look at the activities of these two, you will see that the uh, molecule on the left, that is rofecoxib, makes one hydrogen bond with the target that is arginine 513 of the protein molecule. And the mephanomic acid makes two hydrogen bonds with this particular target with two amino acids, tyrosine 385 and serine 530. So you will see also at the IC50 value, uh, this IC50 is one of the major of the activity. So you will see that IC50 value for uh, the rofecoxib is around 3400 nanomolar, while for the mephanomic acid is 2900 nanomolar. So it's a little bit better than the uh, rofecoxib. Okay, so this just shows you the difference in the activity and the difference at the same time in the number of hydrogen bonds that they can make uh, because hydrogen bonds have uh, like considerably high, a very good amount of energy. So if those bonds are made between two atoms, system will have to invest a lot of energy to break them. So that's how basically they will act. So this is just one type of interaction. We'll be studying many other types during the molecular modeling process uh, and we'll uh, learn that. So this is what kind of creates uh, the idea behind this molecular docking. It, the program that we are going to use, they will try to identify such molecular interactions between the given molecules and then estimate the probable binding energies between these two. That will tell us about the binding of one molecule to another. So especially this docking uh, protocol, when they came into this particular scientific world, they were essentially uh, developed for the biomolecular structures. So we know that biomolecular structures like proteins, DNA, they have or RNA, they have different types of three dimensional structures which are relevant to their activity. We'll be studying these structures uh, in just a few minutes. So these are the structures we utilize because these are the structures which are going to interact with different molecules. So based on uh, the type of molecules that we have, we are going to have different types of docking protocols that could be studied. So uh, basically, before we study, 
all these things there are few more things which will be requiring we have to understand the protein structure in itself we'll be going to the details of that we have to understand the structure of small molecular compounds their conformations etc so that's where we will head to now when you look at the protein structure okay it's very important for their functionality so whenever you have a protein structure uh, the function will be depicted by those specific structures and that structure in turn is depicted by a specific amino acid sequence that the protein has so we have to basically start from there to understand what amino acid the protein has what kind of three dimensional structure it builds and then study that structural details structural surface molecular surface to understand more about the proteins now when you talk especially about the ligand protein docking that is one type of docking for which uh, different types of sites on protein surface are very important so protein has certain sites where the substrate molecules or ligand molecules can bind and that's where the interactions will be maximum and they will bring about certain changes so for example here we have an enzyme called amylase and this the one which is shown in yellow it's basically the starch molecule which is the substrate of the amylase enzyme here so in this another representation you can see how does the protein is actually folded through its backbone you can focus on that and study the binding site what kind of amino acids are there how they are interacting and many things can be done so here you will structurally see that uh, the glutamate 233 aspartate 197 aspartate 300 these are some of the important residues to be involved in this interaction so these sites are very important to be studied because these are the ones which will help us especially in the ligand uh, protein docking and for other docking uh, there some other kind of interface residues or interface sites are important which also will be studied so when you look at the protein structure it's basically kind of a scaffold or support uh, which will have various types of regions various types of uh, areas domains functional uh, regions for different purposes one such very important site on the protein surface is an active site where usually it is present on enzymes so enzymes the way they function is that they bring about some chemical reaction by catalyzing it or providing the necessary chemical potential so these happen at the active site of the enzyme the active site of the enzyme is divided into two parts one is the binding site and another is the catalytic site the binding site is basically this blue area that you see on the stru structure it basically depicts those amino acids which are important in properly orienting the substrate in such a way that it will bind very properly and with maximum interactions and stably be put there and the red area that you see is basically called catalytic site so catalytic site will be basically the amino acid specifically which are involved in the interaction so they reduce the chemical activation energy by providing necessary chemical uh, energy and then that reaction can happen faster or catalyze basically through this so apart from active sites so for example when you are looking for drug discovery as one of the application these active sites are most common targets of the drugs so they will go and bind to the active site and inhibit the molecular structure or this protein so that the normal substrate will not be able to bind it is kind of a competitive inhibition but apart from these kind of sites there are many other types of sites normal binding sites which may uh, be somewhere near the active site but active site may not be involved so in these cases we have a uh, active site kind of this uh, amino acid residues where the molecule comes and binds and does the interaction uh, proteins also have the allosteric binding sites so allosteric binding sites another interesting sites present on the protein which can be investigated through molecular docking so these basically sites which are away from the active site of the enzyme we will first are only talking about enzymes what for other type of proteins again uh, other type of regions comes into picture so allosteric binding site is basically a site which is away from the active site but binding the ligand to that allosteric site brings about some con conformational changes into the three dimensional structure of the enzyme which either will render it inactive or increase its activity depending on the function of this particular molecule apart from this we also have some very interesting cryptic binding sites in proteins so cryptic binding sites are some binding sites which basically are present on the protein surface they are either hidden or completely buried inside the surface they are not directly visible or accessible but only when ligand molecule approaches these sites they automatically bring about the required conformational changes and reveal the cryptic binding site to the ligand and that's how the interactions will happen 
So there are many ways uh, these functions of the proteins can happen while they are interacting. So proteins are one thing. We also uh, currently will start with the protein ligand and slowly we will go to other types of docking. So these binding sites are very important in understanding the enzyme function, which are going to be one of the most important type of target for the molecular docking studies. These binding sites have certain characteristic. They usually are either kind of shallow pockets or kind of pits on the surface of the protein, or they can be very deep cavities inside the protein uh, interior. That can also be happening. More deeper they are, more surface area, polar surface area basically is available for the interactions of the molecules, and it will stabilize those interactions in a much better fashion. These are defined by the lining amino acids, whatever types of amino acids are present in those area, that binding site, they describe the binding site to us. And these usually will be charged, polar or hydrophobic type of amino acid, which will take part in the interaction. Usually these are complementary to the substrates or the ligands which are bound by going to bind to them. Complementary in the sense, there are two ways to be complementary. One, the shape complementarity, that means they will fit into the uh, that area. And uh, there is a chemical complementarity, which will make sure that not just the shape of this uh, molecules is uh, complementary, but also the chemical nature of them is complementary. We'll talk about those as well. Apart from this, the most important aspect of molecular docking to be considered is the flexibility of these molecules. These binding sets are not always exactly as they are, but protein molecules are rather have plasticity. So they have a very flexible nature which can accommodate variety of related structures in the same binding site. So the binding site as well as the overall structure of the protein can change with respect to the uh, ligand binding and that can bring about certain changes into its function. If you look at the enzyme action models that how do we describe these things, then uh, we have different models which describe these uh, data. We have lock and key hypothesis, induced fit model, transition state model. They all describe different ways different enzymes are working. The earlier model was, of course, lock and key. So in this, it was a very simple kind of a thing. So for example, if you have enzyme, which is something like this, then only the ligands with this kind of a shape would be able to bind. So that is lock and key. So these should be fitting with each other. That is what lock and key means. If you have another ligand, which is something like this, then it will not be able to bind to this particular protein or in the binding site. So that is the lock and key hypothesis where it is considered that uh, the enzyme is rigid, molecule is rigid, and they should be able to fit with respect to each other. But then slowly people try to uh, discover and understand more flexible nature of the molecules. Uh, the quasi, uh, like the nature of the molecules was not, of course, rigid. They were plastic, plastic in nature. They had some elasticity. They had some uh, flexibility, a lot of different parameters. Essentially, the overall dynamics of the protein was very important in this. And that's where the induced fit model was introduced which basically states that for the enzyme actions to happen, this catalysis to happen, the enzyme has certain flexibility in this binding set, which can be brought about while the ligand binds. So for example, here we have this ligand and uh, protein separately. So with the help of lock and key hypothesis, of course, these are not going to bind. But if you still see the uh, binding of these two molecules in the real world, what could be the thing? Uh, reason the reason could be very simple that the binding set is flexible and it uh, accommodates or it changes itself in such a way that it can accommodate the ligands of different sizes that's what the induced fit model of the protein or enzyme function was and there is another transition state model which talks about how the energy is basically transferred first the substrate is cleaved in a certain way or changed in a certain way to the intermediate step and by breaking that the energy will be used for further action so for example, here you can see the hexokinase protein. So hexokinase is a very important enzyme in our uh, glycolytic pathway. Without glucose, this it has this kind of specific conformation, which we call as open conformation. But when the glucose molecule binds to it, it kind of uh, bends or closes a little bit. And this closed conformation is basically acquired by the protein structure. So this flexibility is very important to study in all these things. So how to model and all those things will come to that very soon. So these are different ways the molecular interactions can be described. And this is just for the enzymes, but for different other interactions like protein-protein interactions, for DNA-protein interactions, we have different models, which also we'll be talking about as and when we reach to that particular step. So molecular docking, basically it's a computer-based technique 
uh, an extension of molecular modeling approaches to investigate the molecular interactions. It attempts to find the most probable binding conformation of two molecules, which minimize the energy through maximize interactions. That's what it will do. We'll see details about what actually is happening inside a little later, but this is what basically it does. The goal is to find the stable complex of receptor and the ligand, which can be of different natures, varying natures. And of course, uh, the goal is to predict possible binding energy because the binding energy is what it is going to be more useful for us to identify and study the interactions between two molecules to get their uh, chemical reaction in place. That's what molecular docking does. The in molecular docking studies, one of the most challenges which come are because of the molecular flexibility. As we already talked about, molecules can attain many different possible conformations depending on their micro environment. And this is basically attributed to their uh, uh, different bonds, which are flexible in nature or what we call as rotatable bonds. So this provide a very high degree of freedom for these molecules to move around in space and create many different conformations. So for a small molecule, it's still understandable and like manageable kind of conformations, we can find it. But when we talk about the proteins, which have thousands of atoms in their structure, it's just unimaginable to find the uh, exact structure always, which is correct and can be utilized for the further calculations. So this flexibility is one of the big challenge, which is there in the uh, molecular docking studies. But we'll talk about those later, that how can these challenges be overcome? So now, uh, just for the docking purpose, it can be done with many different types of uh, molecules. Uh, we have just seen that, of course, protein and ligand are the first type of system. But apart from that, there are many different systems that can be used. And depending on how you look at this, your problem statement, the molecular dockings can be of different types. So we'll just very briefly discuss what types of docking can be done, how can they be applied, what are their applications in various domains, etc. So first of all, uh, as we already talked about, when especially you are doing the protein uh, related studies, the binding site is very important. So based on the knowledge of your binding or active site, your molecular docking can be of two types. One, which is called as blind docking. So in blind docking, we do not have any information about the binding site. So what we do, we prepare the entire protein surface to receive the ligand. So entire protein surface, it becomes our potential binding site. So it can be anywhere. So this kind of approach is, of course, very time consuming because uh, software has to go through many different types of confirmations to scan through. But it is a useful tool to find the potential binding sites by doing the blind docking. The second type, which is based on the known binding site. So if you already know the binding site of a certain protein or enzyme, then you can directly do the docking or focus your conformational sampling that we, we are going to discuss soon into only that binding site region. Okay. So that is called as the targeted or site specific docking where we specify to the software. Okay. This is the binding site. So I want you to do the conformational sampling of the ligand only in this site. So that is the based on knowledge of binding site types of dockings are based on the nature of molecules involved. The dockings can be of various types and each one of these problems require a very different solution from each other. So we have softwares optimized for individual type of docking. So when you have both the molecules are protein. It is called as protein-protein docking. So it studies the association between the two or more proteins by studying their interface, finding the potential binding surface, and then using the energy calculated for the further analysis. When the two molecules that you have are protein and peptide, we perform the protein-peptide docking. Now, peptide are very short uh, the, in size as compared to the entire proteins. So they require a different treatment because they have high flexibility because of their short uh, like segment or extended structures. So they have a different type of tools available for their flexibility. Then if you one one molecule is a protein and another molecule is a small molecule, then this is called as a protein ligand docking. So here, as you can see, we have a protein and a small chemical compound bound to the proteins binding site. That is what we call as a protein ligand docking. If you are studying the interactions between protein and DNA, that is called as protein DNA docking. And you can dock these two biomolecules and understand the association between them. Similarly, uh, as, sim as same to the protein ligand docking, we also have the DNA ligand docking, which also be very important if you are trying to create a molecule or find a, 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 the study a molecule which binds to the DNA that can be used. So based on the types of molecules used, this is what the types of docking are. 
uh docking studies can also be classified based upon the consideration of flexibility because i told you flexibility is a very big challenge why we will see very soon but the of course you can imagine that number of flexible uh, confirmations will increase the number of calculations in this process so considering this flexibility is a, a very important point to consider before using docking uh, algorithm so based on the flexibility your molecular docking can be divided into two types uh, rigid docking or flexible docking as the name suggests in rigid docking we will basically keep both the molecules as rigid without actually going uh, to create any confirmations of those so it will be very quick calculation within a fraction of a second you will get your result but then of course the accuracy is going to be compromised because we are not taking into into consideration the potential flexibility of these molecules it requires very less computational resources so if you want something very quickly just to kind of get an basic idea about you can use the rigid docking flexible docking on the other hand considers both the molecules which are involved as flexible and depending on the types of molecules used the number of calculations can be extremely extensive and this is very expensive computationally so you need a very powerful computing uh, machine or computing infrastructure to get done with the completely flexible docking to allow the flexibility in both the partner molecules uh, so there are of course various types based on how do you process these molecules for flexibility <clears throat> so for example this rigid docking is very simple rigid receptor ligand uh, rigid ligand docking it's very simple this type of docking where we keep the receptor rigid and we keep the uh, ligand flexible so ligand is allowed to explore the entire conformational search space with the receptor that is our protein or macromolecule will be kept as a rigid molecule in the flexible docking both the molecules that is the receptor as well as the ligand both of them will be <clears throat> completely flexible so this will be very extensive study so people have kind of always tried to find the middle way to kind of uh, get a best trade off between the accuracy and the time constraints or some efficiency so what usually people do they keep uh, the rigid receptor and the flexible ligand that works very well for most <clears throat> but here the problem is we are not considering the flexibility of the receptor so what they do rather than keeping the entire receptor flexible because that is a huge amount of data to be generated and <clears throat> analyzed so what they do they only keep the binding site amino acids so whatever amino acids are within the binding sites only those are kept as flexible and the ligand that we have will also be kept as flexible so this way you are achieving a better accuracy because you are allowing the molecule to be flexible at some point and you are also allowing flexibility for this so whatever changes are going to happen in this particular binding site because of the ligand binding they will automatically be captured during the docking process so that's where this comes into picture the uh, rigid receptor basically hybrid kind of a docking where receptor is broken into two parts one is the rigid part one is the flexible part and then uh, the docking is performed with the flexible ligand so these are just different types of docking which are available that can be performed depending on your requirement depending on your goal depending on your how much time you have or computing resource you have how many molecules you want to screen so all these parameters are important for this apart from this there are many specialized type of docking we will be discussing some of those especially when it comes to protein and ligand docking these uh, advanced types are very important to understand the interactions in a much better fashion so there is an induced fit docking which allows for the flexibility of the protein completely and allows to capture the conformational changes which may happen because of the ligand binding but it takes of course some time to process this kind of data then the next type of docking is solvated docking or hydrated docking which basically means that you are docking uh, you are not just studying the interaction between the two molecules in vacuum but you are also introducing the water molecules to understand the solvation and dissolution potential of these molecules and understand the interactions in a much better manner then for metal ions you have a specific type of docking which we call as metal ion docking which requires you to parameterize your metals properly with some new uh, force fields for specific force fields before you use these molecules for docking so these are some of the uh, toxic types of docking which are available for you to perform now remember that docking is again a kind of modeling in any computational study in any uh, modeling study model is just a representation it is not always going to be 100% and every type of modeling has their own limitations 
docking especially if you see it's a very simple interaction calculation between a protein and another protein or another molecule whatever it is in vacuum so we are not even considering anything else we are not providing the necessary environment we are not providing the necessary uh, charges or ph or temperature or pressure whatever we are just in vacuum trying to find the potential interaction but these interactions may be different in the actual cellular state or reaction state because they will be accompanied by a lot of other types of molecules their concentrations will be important uh, their uh, bindings will be important a lot of things the water molecules are very important there are several interactions which will be enhanced uh, by the water molecules so those are all considerations are not taken into here in this docking so it has a limited uh, uh, like study so for getting your quick interaction study you can definitely use them and especially for filtering large number of molecules this is going to be extremely useful technique and then from this study you can form your hypothesis and take it forward either do an experiment to validate it or go forward for more advanced studies like dynamic simulations etc so it provides you with the necessary setup to create a viable hypothesis in your scientific discovery process so what happens actually in docking is very simple uh, we basically take the structures of protein and ligand we will see now what these structures actually mean where do they come from what are the databases everything we are going to discuss in detail this is just i'm giving you an overview before we start uh, digging into the details so what we do in docking is we take the protein and ligand structures so for protein ligand of i mean the way we can refer to them as a receptor and ligand now ligand i know that in general means a small molecule compound which will be acting on a receptor but with different types of docking these terminologies can still hold true for example if you have a protein peptide docking you can call protein as a receptor and the small peptide as a ligand if you have two proteins you want to study you can call one of the protein as a receptor another protein as a ligand because it is going to go in and bind to it in protein dna you can take one of the uh, just refer it is just addressing these molecules so we know what is happening so we take any one of these uh, pair of molecules that we want to investigate we prepare them in certain way there are a lot of preparations that we have to do for these molecules to be useful for the docking and once we do that the ligands will be matched to fit across entire protein surface if you have provided that or within the binding site and various conformations of those will be done for every conformation that it is checked by the software it is going to score those conformations score in the sense each of these models have certain kind of scoring functions which allowed it to estimate how well these interactions are happening between the two molecules so it will uh, create certain score and give it to each of the conformation and at the end it will report to us which conformation has the best score and which conformations has the lowest score and then further finally based on the scores you can use this information to filter the compounds which are good filter the poses which are better etc all those things will be discussing so that is going to be happening in docking how it happens what are things again just wait for a while and we will reach there uh, so uh, we'll come to this later here yeah. so for molecular docking we'll now talk about some applications and what things are available it's a very important very popular tool in order to uh, understand the interactions between two molecules and especially in the drug discovery it has a lot of applications in fact the modern drug discovery that we called as computer aided drug discovery or structure based drug discovery this entire setup is based on the availability of the structures and thus the molecular docking between those structures that's how it is working for performing the docking there are many different types of uh, softwares available out there today in fact there are more than 1000 uh, different programs available for docking it's important to understand each one of them how do they work what are the differences what are the similarities all those things are very important to analyze before you start using the docking and in the due course we will come to that some of the popular programs available for protein ligand docking these are some free softwares like autodoc autodoc vena doc argus lab swiss doc some of them are uh, and many others then for commercial that is the paid softwares we have icm glide gold flexx molecro igm doc many are there for protein protein docking we have plus pro uh, hex had doc z doc out of this plus pro also has a option to do the protein peptide docking had doc can do protein dna docking so these are different types of tools which are available for your analysis we'll be talking about many of these tools going forward 
especially for protein ligand we will be discussing about the entire orthodox suite orthodox is a very powerful suite which is used for many different types of dockings basic as well as advanced so we'll be discussing that very briefly we will discuss the orthodox vena which is similar to this but it is little different in a utilization and again we'll be studying about plus pro and many other algorithms on the book so this is basically uh, what is available and it's important to analyze before you use what kind of uh, things these molecule algorithms can do what are their scoring functions how do they actually calculate the energies how, what kind of interactions do they take into account so these all things are very important to consider before you use the docking okay we'll come to that how to choose that and read that and all uh, we'll be using autodoc winner but right now i'll not come to that uh, this also i'll come to little later let's first talk about the applications of the docking and then we will come to how to perform and where to start doing your docking so molecular docking can play a very important role in many ways because essentially study of any chemical reaction is of utmost importance for understanding that system very well so when you have to study any biochemical reaction or especially the protein and binding of the protein to others it's important to analyze it through molecular docking first uh, it allows you to determine the lowest free energy structure for the receptor ligand complex so if you can investigate the interaction between two molecules right here on the computer then you will save a lot of time and money of actually uh, getting those compounds getting those proteins purified synthesizing the required compounds uh, setting up the biochemical assays and finding the interaction this allows you to very quickly analyze whether there is a potential or possibility of interaction or not you can use the molecular docking to search a large databases of compounds that we'll be seeing which is important for drug discovery uh the lead generation uh, is basically a process of drug discovery where you find the chemicals which can be synthesized and used for functional st studies uh, molecular docking can be helpful in differential binding of various ligands to various macromolecular receptors so again this example uh, is from the uh, like protein ligand docking where you can find out how the ligand binds to different receptors in a different manner what are the differences in their energies or scores so all those things you can find out by docking that will help you analyze the targets of the ligands that will help you analyze the specificity of the ligand or non specificity of the ligand depending on the score so for that you can use this molecular docking in general if you are working with the protein geometry or molecular structure geometry this helps you analyze different possible geometries and how do they affect uh, overall scores of energy functions of those molecules that can be again found out with the help of docking uh you can use the docking results uh, for further analysis and proposing potential modifications for lead molecules in order to optimize their potency so when in the drug discovery especially when you have the molecular docking performed those data can be utilized to find out that how can we optimize the molecule how, where can we make some additions where can we make some deletions where can we make some replacements in order to optimize this particular molecule so that it will be more potent so this docking results help you analyze the binding of the current molecule with the protein and tells you where are the positive interactions where are the negative interactions where is the scope for improvement where are the empty spaces where new atoms can be added so a lot of things can be studied with the help of docking which will help in the further modification the de novo design of lead generation that is the completely new compound design can also be done with the help of docking so there are various types of docking like fragment docking uh, progressive fragment docking which are utilized in order to create a completely new molecule with the help of some fragments so for that you have this applications for library design of the compounds in uh, the biological system the docking is very relevant to study the protein protein interactions to understand the biochemical pathways to understand uh, how the crosstalk between different protein happens and all those things basically come into account when you are looking at the biological system so whenever you are for example going to use a molecule in the biological system it is going to face lots of different molecules lots of different protein systems barriers in the body so for example there are many kinds of metabolic proteins like cytochrome or many proteases are there whether they will be able to cleave the our protein or not all those study you can do beforehand on a computer you can simulate these reactions basically on a computer before you make your hypothesis and take it to the experimental laboratory so it saves you a lot of time in understanding these systems first better and only take the viable or good hypothesis into the laboratory to validate further so 
protein protein interactions is another very important aspect of studying biological system because all the chemical reactions biochemical pathways these protein protein interactions are very important this crosstalk basically helps do lot of different pathways in the body it may be signal transduction pathway or anything so when you understand this protein protein interactions you know that which protein is talking to which other protein that protein is talking to which other protein so you can build your complete biochemical pathway by filling up the missing gaps in the pathway information this knowledge of docking can be very important to understand many uh, like you know potential targets for pharmacological intervention so when you study these pathways you can come up with the potential proteins potential molecules you can which can be targeted for the drug discovery purpose so that way you can learn about this protein protein through protein protein docking in drug discovery for high throughput screening virtual high throughput screening that is to filter the large number of molecules the docking has lot of applications again we'll be seeing one of the application of this in a practical session how to screen large number of molecules with the help of docking so these are just some of the docking uh, like applications there are many depending on how you look at it for what purpose you want to use it what is your problem statement you can use it in many different ways there is no limit to your imagination how do you want to use it once you understand what's happening inside docking further can be used to validate new docking protocols so whenever the new docking protocols comes this process of modeling can be used for comparison of the results for with the reference molecules you can do redocking experiments many ways you can validate the new programs which are coming by existing docking protocols so these are just some of the application and uh, we'll be talking about many of such going forward into this course understanding the importance of each one of type and how to process them in the practical way but again most of the focus will be on the protein ligand for initial few days and after that you we will shift to the other types of molecules they have a different concepts and different types of studies to be done for them so now with this uh, you know a very brief introduction to docking we have not really seen what happens inside technically but with this very overview of the docking let's start learning different types of molecules which are important how are they represented so today's session is primarily going to based on the types of molecular structures how do they come into picture and how do we represent them on a computer we'll be talking about small molecules as well as biomolecules because both of them have a completely different way of representation but before that uh, any questions any doubts any problems you can let me know we can discuss or any part that is not clear just let me know so we can discuss that before moving forward all right so now that we have seen that what docking is actually trying to do it is going to understand the molecular structures and their interactions between them but before you even reach to that state you have to first understand how do we represent the molecular structures on a computer molecular structures are very important and representing them in a correct manner is very important before you go for the docking so docking has lots of preparatory steps it is not a very easy system to perform and uh, it will require several steps to be performed before you set up your experiments so today we will mostly talk about uh, what are the small molecules how are they represented from where do we get those data of small molecules we will learn about pdb that is protein data bank and how do we get the data about proteins how do we select the molecules for proteins which are good etc so those will be doing today tomorrow we'll continue our discussion on molecular modeling and how the properties of each of these atoms present in the molecules are modeled by using software on a computer so the next topic is representation of molecular structures on computer molecular structures are nothing but a specific atomic arrangement of a given molecule so we all know that molecules are basically made up of different types of atoms and in a 3d space in a nature they attain a certain conformation which we call as basically the most stable conformation and that refers to or associated with the minimum energy conformation these uh, molecular structures are often responsible for a particular function so if there is any change in the structure the function would probably change so that way we have to look at them and understand the structures properly 
Traditionally, you already have seen all these kinds of structures in various 2D uh, diagrams on paper, in publications, and textbooks. But when we do this uh, on the computer or informatics approach, when we apply, we have to represent these molecules in a certain way, which will properly, uh, you know, explain the arrangement of these atoms in the molecules uh, to the computer or any software that handles those computer uh, the data. So that's where the molecular structure representation comes into picture. Now, this representation is different for small molecule compounds and very different for biomolecules. Biomolecules are extremely huge in size. Their chemistry, their physics, their biological aspects, everything is very complicated. So they have a very different set of tools and ways to represent those molecules. On the other hand, small molecules, which are very, very small compounds, they have a different way of uh, representing their structures because they are very small in size and their structures can be derived easily uh, just by giving some minimum amount of information. So we have 2D structures, 3D structures and various levels of structures which are important in this particular docking before we set up uh, these structures on a docking protocol. So for example, we can represent the structure in many ways. Uh, the first very level is, of course, the nomenclature by which we call that particular molecule. It can be a traditional name, a common name. It can be IUPAC name, anything. The next level is representing the bonding patterns between the structures or presence of different atoms in the 2D structure representation. So these kind of representations show us which type of atoms are present and how they are bonded to each other. So that's all it shows us. So as you can see in this particular thing, uh, Okay, so when we basically see this particular thing very simply, we easily understand that this is basically a okay, this is basically a benzene, for example. So we automatically understand because we have studied this in our high school chemistry and all that. Okay, when we see something like this, this dot here means that is a carbon atom. This basically line here means that there is a bond between this carbon and this carbon. Uh, just because we are not seeing anything, it doesn't mean there is nothing. We know that there is already hydrogens present over here, which are attached to each of this carbon. So this representation tells us easily what this is made up of. Then, but our universe, our world, our reality is three-dimensional. It is not 2D. So these molecules, they attend certain confirmation. There are many different types of confirmations that they can attend. And the principle for this conformational degrees of freedom or attending this confirmation is the energy. Uh, entire universe, everything that we do works on the process of in, uh, like uh, minimization or optimization in general. So even when you have a set of atoms in a molecule, they will try to arrange themselves in a, such a confirmation which will minimize their energy and make it a more stable molecule. So these 3D structures represent those confirmations which are of that nature. So here the concept of energy then comes. Of course, it is a very complicated to do on a computer, but we can definitely do it. Now we know that this is still again just a representation purpose because atoms are not like this. There are no sticks. There are no these kind of uh, things are present. But atoms are basically nucleus and electrons moving around them, creating kind of a smooth surface by all the overlap of uh, the, this bond is nothing but an overlap of an orbital. So that's how they are present. So to more clearly represent the overall structure of the molecule, we use this kind of a surface representation on a computer, which shows us how possibly the molecule will be present in this scenario. So 2D structure is useful for, you know, very simplistic nature to understand the basic arrangement of the atoms, what atoms are present to do some documentation because we can easily print it. Uh, we can use it for simple similarity structure search, etc. On the other hand, 3D structure are often difficult to manipulate. We have to be able to reach to that particular confirmation properly uh, without any errors. And that's where we need the assistance of computers. Because for a given molecule, there can be any number of possible 3D confirm. So for example, uh, this is a 3D. So it can be present in this way. It can be present in this way. It can be present in this way. So it can attend numerable different uh, possible confirmations. And in reality, it attends only few of them, one, two, or maybe four of them. So all those are basically the minimum energy stage. So on a computer, when it has to find such thing, it has to actually go through each of the possible uh, confirmation of the molecule, calculate the energy for every possible confirmation, and then find which confirmation has the minimum energy. Now here, of course, question comes, how accurate it will be? 
it will be act, act, as accurate as your energy function is so how do you calculate the energy that also matters a lot that will affect a lot creating your 3d structure or 3d geometry so these structures are often very difficult to handle and manipulate because it requires a lot of attention to details about individual atoms and many things but they represent close to reality scenarios so they are more useful in doing the calculations of various properties and various estimation on screen there are various ways these molecules are represented on a computer we will just have a quick look at some of them so we know how these files are going to be when we use them for docking so for example here you can see a small molecule which is basically aspirin here now we when you look at this we understand what is happening because we have that visual imprinting of each type of atom and how the knowledge of this representation but when you will show this diagram to the computer will that be able to understand what it is will that be understand what each of these things mean directly unless explicitly told no so that's why what we do on a computer to represent this molecular structures we utilize some chemistry drawing or editing programs or some basic file formats which describe each part of this molecule to the computer very systematically so here as you can see one of the ways by which it can be represented in a file format is by using the connection table so whenever you'll be downloading a lot of uh, chemical structures from the databases you will mostly be downloading them into this kind of connection table format so what does this file format basically do it breaks down this entire structure into this kind of a table that's why it's called as connection table format where every individual atom is nicely described to the computer with the help of these numbers so what these numbers represent in this one of this example here we basically have uh, how many number of atoms are present in this entire molecule this first line is basically for the software which has generated this data so there are multiple software so whatever software you use they will in uh, imprint their own signature into this line the second uh, number here will tell you about the number of bonds which are present in the entire molecule so in this molecule we have 13 atoms and 13 bonds next line onwards every line will be dedicated to individual atom present in the molecule so this line basically represents the position of the atom in a space so x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate so we have this x y z geometry or cartesian system in which we will represent the position of each of the atoms so we know each of the atom present where so the first co column is for x coordinate the second column is y coordinate and the third column is z coordinate so we know that it is a 3d the next column represents the type of the atom what type of atom it is whether it's a carbon oxygen uh hydrogen nitrogen whatever it is and then you have lot of several this uh, blank columns which can be filled by the software to represent various types of properties so for example some software may fill one of this column with the partial charges on each of the atom which are important for many calculations so anything can be there in these columns but these are the minimum requirements that we have to represent the molecular structure so then uh, you have this connection table which describes how the molecules are bonded so here the first column shows the first atom of the bond second column shows the second atom of the bond and third column shows the order of the bond so for example here the first atom and second atom is bonded by the double bond that is second order bond the sixth and seventh atom is bonded by the single bond so this way it describes the data to the computer so when any software which can understand this reads this file it can automatically create this kind of a structure by positioning the at positioning the atom at their respective positions wherever these values are and then uh, creating the bond information depending on this connection table so this is how one of the file formats of molecular structures looks like the another type of format which is commonly used in these uh, things are called as linear notations these are very simplistic single line notations to represent the molecular structures in a single line uh, the advantage here is that they are motion readable as well as human readable so you can also read and understand what's happening what molecule it is what atoms they are in and machine can also read them and create the potential structure so here as you can see this is the very simple representation of the same molecule with the help of a uh, notation called as smiles or it stands for simplified molecular line entry system or specification so 
depending on every software that you use they may require things in a different format they may require things in a different way represented so all those things you have to take care when you use this software uh, so there are many file formats like smiles where we very easily represent the molecules with the single strings some software use this data format but they represent only the data in 2d format then we have SDF file or connection table. This is one of the most commonly used file format. It is supported by most of the docking softwares that you will be using for any kind of docking for small molecules. So here, as you can see, uh, these three columns X, Y, Z have some values. Earlier, we had only X, Y and Z values, uh, X and Y values, but the Z values were zero because this is a 2D structure. We don't have the third dimension. But when we will convert this into a 3D structure, you will find even the third column of Z uh, coordinates filled into this file and rest of the things remain same. Uh, another common format in which molecules are represented is called MOL2. It's basically these formats are developed by different companies like this is by Tripos, this is by uh, MDL, uh, etc. So you just have to, these are some of the standardized formats which are available in the chemoinformatics or chemical studies. So here also you have similar type of formats, the numbering of the atom, the types of atom numbered uh, along with the type, then the X, Y, Z coordinates, some extra parameters related to your atoms. Then you have a lot of things, many things here. You have the partial charges also added in the mold too. So this will help you create more better models of your molecule. We'll learn about them on a software when we'll look at them. Oh. Uh, then for macromolecules, especially like proteins or DNA, you have another very uh, different uh, formats because they have so many atoms they need to be properly stored and organized into the file so we can preserve the data about their atoms and their positions. These are all small molecules. So even if we lose this information, so for example, in SMILE, we don't have the information about the coordinates of each atom. But because they are small molecules, their geometries, their chemistries, their models are known, software can easily uh, generate the 2d or 3d structure of those just by looking at this number of types of atoms and bonding pattern because the bond lengths the bond angles are all standardized and they can be handled easily but when it comes to macromolecule you cannot simply model them because these are very big molecule and they have a very complex geometry so in order to get these structures you only have to take the experimental data or some modeling data so these needs to be preserved properly so for representing the macromolecular structures the file formats which are commonly used are PDB or protein data bank, as we'll be seeing uh, in some time. So in this, the molecule is stored. Again, of course, the X, Y, Z coordinates are going to be common. These are not going to change. But apart from that, you have various kinds of, you know, uh, extra thing, the definition of type of atom, the number of atom, the residues, the chains, lots of information that comes. We'll come to that in a little while so we will understand the details. So these are usually used for macromolecular structures. So for small molecules, we have different ways of dealing with them. And for macromolecules or big molecules or biomolecules, we have different ways of dealing with them. Similar to PDB, we have another format called PDBQT, which essentially is an extension of PDB, where apart from the XYZ coordinates of each atom, we also have the charges. So if you see here, you don't have any charge column over here, it's blank. But in this, you will see an extra column which shows the partial charges on each of the atom. Because for many calculations we'll be doing going forward like docking, the charge is of course going to be more important. And that's why this charge information can be useful in generating the required sets for the docking. So in this, PDB is the same uh, format. Q is for charge and T is for type. So it adds a specific type of atom uh, or nomenclature to this atom types which are relevant to that particular software. So this PDBQT is another type of format generated by the software called Autodoc, which we'll be using in our molecular docking studies. So what are the 2D and 3D structures? When can we use one, etc.? So 2D are usually important for very quick analysis, for documentation, for storing large number of chemical structures, for doing the screening of library or similarity based structure screening, etc. So that also important. 3D structures are important when you're going to use these structures for calculation or interaction of these molecules with others. So whenever you want to work in a realistic environment where you have the two molecules interacting in 3D, you need to have this 3D structure. 
it's very possible to generate 3d structure from 2d structure or 3d to 2d any conversion is possible with the help of many softwares uh, out there so those can help you in basically generating the desired uh, confirmations and find the minimum energy confirmation for a given set of atoms in a molecule so these are very important representations in order to generate uh, several physical and chemical properties out of which docking is one of them so whenever you are going to do docking it's very important to process your ligands properly and creates the best possible uh, version of the three dimensional structure of the molecule so as to create the better uh, prediction of the binding at the end uh, so once you have these common structures there are many things you can do of course you can use it for similarity searching which we will not be discussing much you can use it for screening of libraries with docking for example so those all can be done with this so usually in the drug discovery process what happens you have a large number of potential molecules that can be drug and to find which one of them is active against the selected target you perform the molecular docking of all these compounds against that particular target so that molecular docking will tell you which of these molecules are having a good affinity towards the target and which have the bad affinity towards the target so that way you can filter your library further always remember that all these calculations that we do <coughs> for those the principle of these studies so whenever we uh, deal with the molecules chemical systems on a computer it field is called as chemoinformatics when we deal with the biological molecules on the computer it is called as bioinformatics a principle of cheminformatics is that similar molecules exhibit similar properties the choice of representation is key in determining how such similarities are evaluated and thus the effectiveness of sub subsequent analysis so for example if uh, in 2d you see that two molecules are, are having similar kind of you know uh, 2d structure but in 3d Okay, so in 2D, they look same. Just one extra atom is there, but the rest of the structure is same. So you may find, feel that, okay, these may have similar functions. But in 3D, these two can generate completely different 3D conformations and their functions will definitely change. So depending on your role, your objective, you should choose a particular type of 3D conformation. Again, for that, we have to go through various types of uh, methodologies to calculate the energies and all. So this is very important to properly store your molecule optimize it very nicely with respect to the energies and geometries before you use these molecules for any further calculation we'll talk about those molecular modeling and tools tomorrow uh, in the next session so this is for smaller molecules that how it's very easy because just by giving the set of atoms and bonding the software can easily draw any molecule okay so, but it is not the same for the uh, macromolecule because macromolecule has a very different way of going uh, for that uh, going towards the 3d structure so just to give you a very quick example uh, what i'll do now this i just showed you a smiles representation yeah so here you can see this is the smiles representation so if i copy this entire representation smiles representation uh, maybe people from chemistry might have already studied about this but uh, others may not have so when i copy it and when I paste it into this particular software, what it will do, it will automatically read that, okay, this is a smiles format, okay, this is the atom, these are the bonded atoms, etc. And it will automatically create the structure rather than showing it as it is. So when I paste it, it will paste it as a structure. So it has automatically read that information in the smiles format and it has created this. So how it was able to create these positions of the atoms without giving them? So for that, they use something called as molecular models or molecular modeling force fields in order to generate these things. So there are some standard geometries of these angles and lengths which are used and that can be further expressed in a better way by molecular modeling. So this way, uh, these representations help create different data for our representation. Once this is done, then you can prepare it further. We will see the preparation steps later for the docking and then you can uh, perform the docking. So where do we get these molecular structures from where we can download for different types of chemicals, different types of structures. So one of the database for this, which is present the online database is called PopChem. So PopChem is one such database, which is available to which stores the molecular structures of a large number of small molecule compounds. 
so it has currently 111 million different compounds their structures and a lot of their chemical information so this is basically a public domain database which is freely accessible to all you can just search for the compound that you want to get the structure of and then you can download that structure for preparing for docking so this is as you can see this is the database to explore the chemistry uh, and find chemical information from authoritative sources you can search the database with uh, aspirin like uh, the name of the compound the name of the target the molecular formula uh, these kind of uh, smart keys then we have in chi keys we have smiles so you can put any one of such search term and it will automatically find the possible structures from the database it has lots of information currently it has 111 million different compounds and their structures and data uh, stored in that. So from here, whatever compounds you want to study, you can download the structures from here. For example, let's say you uh, we will be doing one exercise later. Uh, and for that, let's say we want to find uh, the effect of or you know, binding of curcumin, that is a part of the turmeric, to certain potential targets for anti-cancer therapy. So you will need the structure of curcumin. So how can you get it? Just simply put the name of your molecule that you're looking for here. And it will show you the potential molecules which are related to this. So the first best match will be your uh, like go-to compound. You can open it to learn more about it. You will have lots of information. The amount of information which is provided here is, of course, enormous. But all we need is the structure. As you can see, the 2D as well as 3D structure is available. So you can simply go here, download and uh, click on this 3d confirmer and save so only what this there are many formats but the one we have already seen is sdf only so we can simply download this compound and save it on a folder I'll create uh, so i'm going to save this compound over here which is now downloaded as a 3d structure so when I actually see the compound file, it is what it is made up of. It is basically nothing but these X, Y, Z coordinates. There are 47 atoms. There are 48 different uh, bonds involved. Uh, the software it was used to create was called OECAM. Uh, at the bottom, you have the connection patterns, connectivity table, and a lot of extra information is there, like properties and all. But when you open this file in any chemistry related software, so I'll go to file, open. Don't worry about this software as of now. I'm just using it for demonstration purpose only. So you can just simply. Now you can see how this molecule in 3D looks something like this. So here you can see different atoms, how they are connected, where they are connected. You can rotate it, see it from different angles. So this is the structure of curcumin, which is the most important part of the turmeric. It is the active ingredient in the turmeric, which gives us a lot of different properties. So to explore the uh, like potential of this against different uh, uh, targets, you can use this structure and dock it against the different potential targets, let's say in cancer therapy. So that can be done. So this way you can get any compound from it. So for example, you want a structure of some already existing drug and you want to study its effect for repurposing on some other molecules or other targets, just put it. So uh, just to give you an example, currently we know that we all are facing this uh, COVID-19 or Corona pandemic and many types of drugs are being uh, investigated by repurposing them for new targets of Corona. One of that drug is uh, Remdesivir that is basically it's an antivirus. So let's try to search the structure and uh, look at it. So when you go here, it will show you that this is the structure details. It will also show you some summary like molecular formula, molecular weight, the IUPAC name, when it was created, and if it has any useful tags, like for example, currently it is tagged as a COVID-19 potential drug. So you will see all those tags which were here. So you can just click on this compound and you will get, go to the link of this compound where you will have all these properties, of course, but we are only interested in the structure. So if you can get the uh, 2D or 3D structures of these compounds from this PubChem database, whatever you want to test, for your different uh, studies. So this has compounds from natural sources. This has compounds from oh, existing drugs, synthetic compounds, uh, compounds found in like toxins found in different organisms, 
uh, compounds generated as a byproduct of some marine uh, like uh, system ecosystem they can be from anywhere so all the compounds that are known uh, to us they all are present in this particular database as you can see 111 million it's a very big number so all of them are present along with their respective properties uh, related to that so from this popcam you can get the structures of many different compounds there are many ways to navigate to the uh, this particular database and get the compounds for but basically we will use it right now just for the purpose of getting the structures of different compounds that will be testing so you can just go here and get the things for the compounds which are novel or you want to build on your own you can always uh, kind of draw it in any kind of this chemistry drawing software and save them in different formats so once you have these compounds then these can be tested against of course the proteins or dna or other molecules so now we will learn about those that is how does the uh, protein structure looks like why it is important how it is represented what are the differences between this and that where do we find the protein structure so all of the things we will see in just some time but before that uh, let's take a small break just to kind of you know uh, get our hands wrapped around what we have discussed so far and what's happening if there are any questions any doubts just let me know we can discuss those and then we can move forward All right, so I think there are no questions. So now what we'll be doing is, uh, okay, there is someone typing, okay. So after this, we will be switching to the next part in your portal. So because these meetings are limited for a certain time, so we will having sessions of one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes each. So we will now switch to the next. So you just on your portal, click on the next button and you will be taken to the uh, next session, which will be starting in two, three minutes. So if you have any questions, you can ask uh, right now and then we can switch to the other part. how to use popcam for literature search uh, okay so popcam uh, has lots of literature related to the small compounds of course related to compounds only so here basically you can search so whatever compound you want to uh, learn about in the literature so you can just search over here directly so let's say this uh, the same compound that we were just studying about that is remdesivir so we can just put the name And then search. So once you search over here, uh, here you can see the link to literature. So you have different compounds related to this. You have substances related to this, and you have a link to literature. So when you click on the literature, you can find lots of relevant literature related to this particular compound. It's bioactivity studies and many other things related to it. So right here only you have different types of studies. Currently we were using this compound data set only because we just needed a structure. But if you want to need more information, you can use substances or literature or bioassay data sets, which are available for several compounds. So as you can see here, we have around 461 different uh, articles which talk about uh, the importance, the, the studies about Ramdevisir and uh, what they have done, the abstract, authors, journal, everything you will have. And you will have also linked to the PubMed, which is PubMed is basically the literature database. So from there, you can find the uh, actual literature and link to those journals.
okay so guys just uh, come to the next session i uh, just click on the next button i'll end this session and i will launch the next one so we can talk over there